Hi, I'm Mike Hardigan. Thanks for joining me. I'm doing something a little bit different today. We're going to take a look at how to add a backing track to a Solo Bolo Olympic Song Challenge. What is a Solo Bolo Olympic Song Challenge? For those unfamiliar with Comedy Bang Bang, this is one of the many outlandishly entertaining things that happen when Scott Ackerman and Ben Schwartz get together one-on-one -on -one in front of some microphones. The idea is for one of them to begin singing a song, and at a crucial moment, the other will jump in with a new song that's in some way related to the previous one, continuing for as long as they decide to keep it up. I'm a fan of the podcast, and I have a fairly unique hobby of adding musical accompaniment to a cappella performances, trying to make it sound as though it was there all along. Olympic song challenges are a great candidate for this sort of treatment. Today, I'm going to show you how I go about it. It's a multi-step process. The very first thing to do is to listen to the whole thing and do any necessary homework. When I started with this project, I wasn't familiar with the musical Hamilton, but I immediately went and listened to You'll Be Back and My Shot, so I could try to be faithful to the accompaniment. Once you feel fully prepared, begin by transcribing the whole performance. We're going to be weaving some fairly intricate music around pre-existing audio, and it's extremely helpful to be able to have every note in front of you. Take me home Take tonight. Me home tonight. I'm going to give them the key right off the bat of A major. Bass clef. And we will make that a pickup A, I've decided. So under document, we're going to find pickup measure. That's going to be a half note. Take, take me. One, two, three, four. Take me home. Take. Sorry, I'm going to make that. Take me home. One, two, three, take four. Me. Okay, so that's just going to be a bar of three. And then we'll jump up into the treble clef for Take Me Home Tonight. I believe that's correct. Take me home tonight. I don't want to let your ground tell say that I'm Step two. Figure out the best chords to accompany the melodies and add those to the score. In some cases, because they're singing a cappella, they might wander from key to key a little, so try to figure out clever chord transitions so the music sounds like it was meant to be that way. Talk, 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 happy talk. And, and it starts off hinting at the key of A, but then quickly settles into G. Talk about things you like to do. You've got to have a dream if you don't have a dream. So, let's figure out how to transition between those two, and you notice uh, Happy Talk, one, two, three, a little bit was cut off there, but we can work with that. I'm not going to make any edits to change the timing on this. We're going to build in the orchestration around it and make it fit like... A smooth sliding gossamer glove. Happy time. Talk about things you. Okay, so we'll start on A. Let's put an A minor there. And then talk about things D7 you like to do. Step three. Set up your recording project with time signatures and markers to create a tempo map. When we were working on the score, there were a few meter changes. In Digital Performer, I'm setting up the conductor track to match the score and putting in markers to show where one song leads into the next. Then load up the audio from the podcast and use the Adjust Beats function to create a tempo map so that your click track syncs right up with the singing. This will help a lot with the recording. 
Take me home. Take me home. Now we're done with the boring stuff, and it's time to start playing some music. With your score in front of you, and a click track in your ear, record the piano part to go with the entire performance. Do it in MIDI rather than audio, so that edits will be easy and precise. This piano part will serve as a guide for any other instruments we'll put on top of it. Next, add the bass and drums. Now that the rhythm tracks are finished, it's time to bring the project to life with some more instrumental layers. We'll put some organ on speed. Add some strings to maybe. Add a harp glissando to emphasize a key change. We're going into the key of D flat. So what I like to do is transpose my keyboard so that whatever note I want the tonic to be is being played when I hit the note C. So I just transpose up a half step. So now this is my D flat. And I can just do a glissando on the white keys. And that gives me the appropriate tonality. So here we are going into D flat. At a flute part. And a big horn build up into the bridge. One transition seems like it needs a big synth pad with a bend on it. Now that we've got a bunch of instruments recorded, it's time to do some mixing. I've noticed that the harp seems to be a little bottom heavy, so I'm going to put some EQ on there and give it a, a good low cut so that we're mostly here in the high end. Definitely reverb on the woodwinds. Put that cut even higher on the harp, and let's listen to that little rip again. Let's see, that's better. Without the cut, it sounds like this. And with it, definitely opening it up for just like the, the higher end of things. And that's how we add music to a solo bolo Olympic song challenge. It's a process that takes the combination of a number of different skills. Technical knowledge of software like Finale and Digital Performer, 
music theory knowledge for transcribing the melodies and creating good chord progressions, arranging and orchestration skills for deciding which instruments to use in which sections, and of course some keyboard chops and the ability to read chord changes and play appropriate grooves based on them, like we've been looking at so far this year. In the upcoming months, I'm planning a few videos on each of these topics. I've found all these skills to be valuable on their own, and sometimes a project like this one comes along that calls for all of them. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks for watching.